But that day, Laban removed the he-goats that were striped and spotted, and all the she-goats that were speckled and spotted, every one that had white on it, and every lamb that was black, and put them in charge of his sons. And he set a distance of three days' journey between himself and Jacob, and Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flock. Then Jacob took fresh rods of poplar and almond and plain, and peeled white streaks in them, exposing the white of the rods. He set the rods which he had peeled in front of the flocks in the runnels, that is, the watering troughs, where the flocks came to drink. And since they bred when they came to drink, the flocks spread in front of the rods, and so the flocks brought forth striped, speckled, and spotted. And Jacob separated the lambs, and set the faces of the flocks toward the striped and all the black in the flock of Laban. And he put his own droves apart, and did not put them with Laban's flock. Whenever the stronger of the flock were breeding, Jacob laid the rods in the runnels before the eyes of the flock, that they, that they might breed among the rods. But for the feebler of the flock, he did not lay them there. So the feebler were Laban's, and the stronger Jacob's. Thus the man grew exceedingly rich, and had large flocks, made servants and men servants, and camels and donkeys. Now Jacob heard that the sons of Laban were saying, Jacob has taken all that was our father's, and from what was our father's he has gained all this wealth. And Jacob saw that Laban did not regard him with favor as before. Then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers, and to your kindred, and I will be with you. So Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah into the field where his flock was, and said to them, I see that your father does not regard me with favor as he did before, but the God of my father has been with me. You know that I have served your father with all my strength, yet your father has cheated me and changed my wages ten times, but God did not permit him to harm me. If he said, The spotted shall be your wages, then all the flock bore spotted, and if he said, The striped shall be your wages, then all the flock bore striped. Thus God has taken away the cattle of your father, and given them to me. In the mating season of the flock, I lifted up my eyes, and saw in a dream that the he-goats which leapt on the rock were striped, spotted, and mottled. Then the angel of God said to me in the dream, Jacob, and I said, Here I am. And he said, Lift up your eyes, and see, all the goats that leap upon the rock are striped, spotted, and mottled, for I have seen all that Laban is doing to you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed a pillar and made a vow to me. Now arise, go forth from this land, and return to the land of your birth. Then Rachel and Leah answered him, Is there any portion or inheritance left to us in our father's house? Are we not regarded by him as foreigners? For he has sold us, and he has been using up the money given for us. All the property which God has taken away from our father belongs to us and to our children. Now then, whatever God has said to you, do. So Jacob arose and set his sons and his wives on camels, and he drove away all his cattle, all his livestock which he had gained, the cattle in his, in his possession which he had acquired in Ponderam, in order to go to the land of Canaan to his father Isaac. Laban had gone to shear his sheep, and Rachel stole her father's household gods. And Jacob outwitted Laban the Aramean, in that he did not tell him that he intended to flee. He fled with all that he had and arose and crossed the Euphrates and set his face toward the hill country of Gilead. When it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob had fled, he took his kinsmen with him and pursued him for seven days and followed close after him into the hill country of Gilead. But God came to Laban the Aramean in a dream by night and said to him, Take heed that you say not a word to Jacob, either good or bad. And Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the hill country, and Laban with his kinsmen encamped in the hill country of Gilead. And Laban said to Jacob, What have you done that you have cheated me and carried away my daughters like captives of the sword? Why did you flee secretly and cheat me and did not tell me so that I might have sent you away with mirth and songs with tambourine and lyre? Why did you not permit me to kiss my sons and my daughters farewell? Now you have done foolishly. It is in my power to do you harm. But the God of your father spoke to me last night, saying, Take heed that you speak to Jacob neither good nor bad. And now you have gone away because you longed greatly for your father's house. But why did you steal my gods? 
Jacob answered Laban, because I was afraid, for I thought that you would take your daughters from me by force. Any one with whom you find your gods shall not live. In the presence of our kinsmen, point out what I have that is yours, and take it. Now Jacob did not know that Rachel had stolen them. So Laban went into Jacob's tent, and into Leah's tent, and into the tent of the two maidservants, but he did not find them. And he went out of Leah's tent, and entered Rachel's. Now Rachel had taken the household gods, and put them in the camel's saddle, and sat upon them. Laban felt all about the tent, but, but did not find them. And she said to her father, Let not my lord be angry that I cannot rise before you, for the way of women is upon me. So he searched, and did not find the household gods. Then Jacob became angry, and upbraided Laban. Jacob said to Laban, What is my offense? What is my sin that you have hotly pursued me? Although you have felt through my, all my goods, what have you found of all your household goods? Set it here before my kinsmen and your kinsmen, that they may decide between us two. These twenty years I have been with you. Your ewes and your she-goats have not miscarried, and I have not eaten the rams of your flocks. That which was torn by wild beasts I did not bring to you. I bore the loss of it myself. Of my hand you required it, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. Thus I was. By day the heat consumed me, and the cold by night, and my sleep fled from my eyes. These twenty years I have been in your house. I served you fourteen years for your two daughters, and six years for your flock. And you have changed my wages ten times. If the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac, had not been on my side, surely now you would have sent me away empty-handed. God saw my affliction and the labor of my hands, and rebuked you last night. Then Laban answered and said to Jacob, The daughters are my daughters, the children are my children, the flocks are my flocks, and all that you see is mine. But what can I do this day to these my daughters, or to their children whom they have borne? Come now, let us make a covenant, you and I, and let it be a witness between you and me. So Jacob took a stone and set it up as a pillar. And Jacob said to, the, to his kinsmen, Gather stones. And they took stones and made a heap, and they ate there by the heap. Laban called it Jegar Sahadutha, but Jacob called it Galid. Laban said, This heap is a witness between you and me today. Therefore he named it Galid, and the pillar Mizpah, for he said, The Lord watch between you and me when we are absent from one another. If you ill-treat my daughters, or if you take wives besides my daughters, although no man is with us, Remember, God is witness between you and me. Then Laban said to Jacob, See this heap and the pillar, which I have set between you and me. This heap is a witness, and the pillar is a witness, that you will not pass over this heap to you, and you will not pass over this heap and this pillar to me, for harm. The God of Abraham and the God of Nahor, the God of their father, judge between us. So Jacob swore by the fear of his father Isaac, and Jacob offered a sacrifice on the mountain and called his kinsmen to eat bread. And they ate bread and tarried all night on the mountain. Early in the morning, Laban arose and kissed his grandchildren and his daughters and blessed them. Then he departed and returned home. Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's army. So he called the name of that place Mahanam. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau his brother in the land of Seir, the country of Edom, instructing them. Thus you shall say to the Lord Esau, Thus says your servant Jacob, I have sojourned with Laban, and stayed until now, and I have oxen, donkeys, flocks, men servants, and maid servants, and I have sent to tell my Lord in order that I might fa find favor in your sight. And the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, we came to your brother Esau, and he is coming to meet you, and four hundred men with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people that were with him, and the flocks and herds and camels, into two companies, thinking, If Esau comes to the one company and destroys it, then the company which is left will escape. And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, O Lord, who said to me, Return to your country and to your kindred, and I will do you good. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercy and all the faithfulness which you have shown to your servant, 
for with only my staff I crossed this Jordan, and now I have become two companies. Deliver me, I beg you, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he come and slay us all, the mothers with the children. But you said, I will do you good, and make your descendants as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. To the choir master of David. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They do abominable deeds. There is none that does good. The Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any that act wisely, that seek after God. They have all gone astray. They are all alike corrupt. There is none that does good. No, not one. Have they no knowledge, all the evildoers who eat up my people as they eat bread, and do not call upon the Lord? There they shall be in great terror, for God is with the generation of the righteous. You would confound the plans of the poor, but the Lord is his refuge. O oh, that deliverance for Israel would come out of Zion. When the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, Jacob shall rejoice, Israel shall be glad. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher, and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house, be usable, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, utter in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim upon the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, and not one of them will fall to the ground without your father's will. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace on earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foes will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet because he is a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives to one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, truly, I say to you, he shall not lose his reward. To what do you give first priority in your life? Many would say their families. Such an answer seems as noble as it is natural. However, even pagans and the wicked could make such a claim, while pursuing selfishness and cruelty to others. Was not Pharaoh good to his own family? Jesus overturns our thinking with his teaching on discipleship. He warns that loyalty to him may lead one to be in conflict with the most intense of family bonds, even those between parents and children. For a follower of Jesus, the first priority must be to do the will of our Heavenly Father. God commands our deepest love and loyalty. Even love of self must submit to Christ. He who loses his life for my sake will find it. Paradoxically, unless God is put in the first place, nothing else will be in its right place in our lives. There is no St. Francis if he obeys his earthly father rather than Christ. Many a saint would not have fulfilled their divine call if they had heeded the voices of family members. However, by putting God first, we learn the humility, discipline, and charity to truly love our families. Do you truly love your family by putting God first in your life?